For this project, any Category 3 yarn will work, but I used a half a skein of Baby Burnett Sport Yarn in Baby Taupe and a quarter skein in Popsicle Blue. As for tools, a 4.5mm hook, scissors, stitch markers, and a tape measure. There's a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount. Watch to the end of the video to learn how to enter this week's giveaway. We're using four stitches for this project, and they will be as follows. Chain slip stitch, single crochet, double crochet, and treble crochet. This tutorial is for a size small, but you can adjust it for your size and we explain how to in the video, so let's get started. Getting this piece started, we're first going to grab our category 3 yarn, make a slip knot, grab our four and a half millimeter hook and start off by doing some measuring. So the first measurement that we're going to make is going to be from collarbone to collarbone and my measurement that I have is a total of eight and a half inches or 22 centimeters so I'm going to start off by making a chain of 35 and go ahead and grab your stitch markers because we're going to be inserting that into our last chain. Once when we have our chain we are going to be grabbing our stitch marker and then inserting that into our last chain that we made and then we're going to need to do another measurement, which is going to be from our collarbone down to where we want the bottom of our collar to be. And for me, that is a total of nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters or 42 chains. Once when we have that portion of our chain done, we are going to be grabbing our next stitch marker. But right before we insert that in, we're going to block off that last chain and do an extra chain up of one because this is going to be our bottom point. And now we can insert our stitch marker into that chain one that we just did. Mine is a different color just so I know what is the top and what is the shoulder portion, but you guys don't have to. That's just what I like to do so I know where I'm going. But once when we have this, we're going to make just one last measurement from the bottom of our collar up to our collarbone. And this is going to be pretty much the same measurement that we just made. So another nine and a half inches or 24 centimeters or another 42 chains. And now that we have our very long chain, we are now going to connect it all. So the first thing we're going to have to do is just run our thumb along one side of our chain, making sure that it's not twisted right before we go in with our slip stitch so that it is easier to go in with our next single crochet row. Once when we know it's not twisted, we're going to insert it into that first chain that we made. We're going to yarn over and pull through everything. And now we should have a pretty decent looking triangle. Now that we have connected our two chain ends together, this is what our work should be looking like. And the next row we're gonna do is gonna be just a simple row of single crochets while maintaining just a few increases, basically where our stitch markers are at. So let's get that row started off together. We don't have a stitch marker into this corner, but go ahead and grab one because we're about to insert it. So the first thing we're gonna do is just insert our hook into that first chain that we made for ourselves with an increase of two single crochets. So here is one single crochet. We're going to go in with just one more. Here is our second. We're going to grab our stitch marker and then insert it into that first single crochet that we made or the one that's closest to the bottom of our collar. So we're just going to insert it into there. And from here, we're just going to be putting one single crochet into every chain that we have until we hit our next stitch marker, making sure that we're going in towards our other collarbone stitch marker making sure we're not going down to the bottom so I'll meet you guys back once we make our way over to this point now that we reached our next collarbone stitch marker what we're going to do from here is take out our stitch marker for now and then we're going to go in with another increase of two single crochets so there's one there's two now we're going to take our stitch marker and place it back into the increase of two that we just made but now we're going into the second single crochet that we just made or the one that is also closest to the bottom of the collar. So insert into there and then from here go all the way down with single crochets until we hit our next stitch marker and then I'll meet you guys back. And now that we have single crocheted all the way down to the bottom of our collar where the point is going to be, we can now take out this stitch marker and go in with another increase. But this time it's going to be an increase of three because we need to maintain this point. So there's one single crochet two and then three all into that middle loop that we just took our stitch marker out of once we have that take our stitch marker and then insert it into that second single crochet that we just made because that is that middle loop once we have that put one single crochet into every chain going all the way back up 
and then slip stitch into this first single crochet that we have. But right before we do that, make sure that this first single crochet row isn't twisted. But once when we have slip stitch, do a chain up of one and cut. All right, so we are all finished up with our first row of our single crochet that goes around our collar. And the next thing we're gonna need to do is actually try this on. I'm giggling because this is a little unconventional, but try this on. And then from here, we're going to measure from this bottom point all the way down to where we want the bottom of this top portion to be. So I have already measured mine. Mine is gonna be about seven and a half inches or 19 centimeters. And it's gonna be a total of 33 chains. But once when we have this, we're just going to flip our work upside down because we want to be going in through the back loops we want to have a certain look for this so now that our bottom point of our collar is flipped and faced away from us we're going to take out this stitch marker insert our hook into that middle loop insert our yarn onto our hook and then from here we're going to pull through and we're going to start off by making our chain and now that we have our chain what we're going to do from here is block off that last chain do a chain up of one that counts as a single crochet and then into that loop that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook we're going to go in with a single crochet and from here go ahead and go all the way down with one single crochet into every chain that we have and we are going to stop once we hit that collar because we're going to do a chain up of one and cut and then we're going to go in with our secondary color alrighty so we are back and this is what we should have now we have our collar and a little tail hanging off the edge because this is gonna be what we're gonna need to attach our cables to. But right before we go in with our cables, we're first gonna go in with our secondary color just as a, I guess, starter row for this color. So what we're gonna do is turn our work to the side and our tail should be on our right side. We're gonna be inserting our hook into this first back loop, just like that. Insert our yarn onto our hook pull through do a chain up of one to secure and then from here we're just going to do back loop single crochets going all the way up including into the collar until we hit our stitch marker that we have right here which is our collarbone stitch marker once we hit that we're going to do an increase of two single crochet just like how we did in the first row and then we're going to insert our stitch marker into the first single crochet that we did or the one that's closest to the bottom and same dealio over here back loop single crochet increase of two single crochet insert your stitch marker into the second single crochet that you did or the one that's closest to the bottom and then do back loop single crochets coming all the way back down and then I'll meet you guys back once when we have one layer of our secondary color so we are back and we have just gone all the way around with our row of back loop single crochets when it came to our secondary color and now we can start going in with our cabling so first of all taking a look at our work making sure that the ribbing is faced up towards us we're going to turn our work on its side so that the tail end is facing to the right and then we're going to be inserting our hook into that corner loop that we have right here so we're going to insert we're going to take our same secondary color pull through and we're going to start off by doing a chain out of four for our cable once we have our chain we're going to block off that last chain do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet and then into that loop that we blocked off we're going to insert our hook into that loop or the fourth loop from our hook with a double crochet and from here go ahead and put one double crochet into every loop that we have going back down our work once we have our row of double crochets we are now going to attach it into the base so we're going to be counting up one two available loops insert your hook into that loop with a slip stitch to close off that row and from here we're going to insert our hook into that next available loop to work our way up to the next from here we are going to go down with a row of single crochet just putting one single crochet into every loop because our cables need to be worked from the outside in so we start off with four loops so here's one two three and then four once we have that we're going to do a chain up of three that counts as a double once we have that we're going to do a bunch of front post trebles so let's get that started together we're first going to do a yarn over of two and not counting that turning chain or that chain up of three we're going to work our way behind this next post so skip this one we're going to insert our hook behind that next post we're going to yarn over pull through pull through two pull through two pull through two and this straight up and down front post treble is what we're going to call a pillar in this tutorial so once we have that pillar done now we're going to start working on our cabling into these next three posts 
So we're going to start off by doing another front post treble, but we are going to be skipping this next double crochet post and then working our way into the second available one that we have, which is this one right here. So insert your hook behind there, just like a regular front post treble. Pull through, pull through, pull through. And we're going to be doing one more into that next double crochet. Insert, yarn over, pull through, pull through, pull through, pull through. And now we're going to work our way back to that one double crochet post that we skipped so that we get our twist forming our cable. So we're going to yarn over twice. So you're going to insert your hook into that loop that we skipped. So bring it on back. Insert behind there, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two, and that is our first twist. Once when we have that, we're going to be counting up one, two available loops, insert your hook into that second available loop to close off this row. Once when we have that, we are going to slip stitch into that next available loop in our base, flip our work, and then work all the way across with one single crochet into every loop. And remembering once we do our single crochet row, we should always come out with four single crochets. So we've just gone all the way down with our single crochets. Just to refresh you guys one more time, we're going to do a chain up of three that counts as a double crochet. Go ahead and flip your work, prepare for a front post treble, and do one pillar into the previous front post treble that goes straight up and down. So insert behind that front post treble, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. Once we have that, now we're going to start working on our twists again. So we're going to prepare for a front post treble. We are still going to be skipping that next available post to go into and then automatically go into that second one. You guys might need to pull it apart a little bit in order to see it, but go ahead and insert your hook behind that second one. Pull through, pull through two, pull through two, pull through two. And then just like in the previous row, we're going to be putting one more front post treble into the post right after that. So yarn over twice, front post treble, insert, pull through, pull through two, 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 and then work our way back to that one post that we skipped. So yarn over twice, bring it on back to that one that we skipped, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. Now that we have that done, we will be inserting into that second available loop into the base. One, two, and slip stitch. And we are just going to keep doing rows two and three that we just did, going all the way up until we hit this nice little juncture that we have right here where our tail end meets our collar. Then I'll show you guys what to do from there, making sure that you guys end on a cable stitch row because we're going to do some little fancy into the single crochet row. So we're back with our cable stitches and we've just made it all the way up to this juncture that we have right here and just to let you guys know I have a total of 21 rows and now that we are somewhere around here now we're going to do just a little bit of an extender out in this direction so that we can maintain this type of collar that we have right here and if you guys aren't exactly right where this is if you guys are just a couple loops off that's totally fine just as long as you guys are as close as you can it'll all work out. But once we get here, the next row that we're going to go into is a row of single crochets. So let's get that started off together. All we're going to do into here is to try to pull it out in the opposite direction. So we're going to first start off by doing a slip stitch into the next available loop. That's how we start all of our single crochet rows. We're going to flip our work. And then into these first two loops that we have, we're going to go in with a decrease of two single crochets. So insert, pull through, insert, pull through, we should have three loops on our hook, yarn over, pull through all three, and then on top of all these rows, aka our single crochet rows, we should always end up with four loops on top. So there is one right here, we're going to go in with one, here is two, three, and then four in total, just like that. Once we have that, everything else is going to be exactly the same, so do a chain up of three, flip our work, and then maintain doing our cable stitches just like this going all the way up the side of our collar until we hit our stitch marker up here, which is right where our collarbone is. And then once we get here, we're going to cut and tie. And then I will talk you through doing the other side. So this is what our collar is looking like once we have just one side of our cable stitch all finished up. 
And just to let you guys know, from the bottom all the way up until I hit my stitch marker, I have a total of 50 rows. And now we're basically just going to do the same thing that we did here along the other side. But like I said in a previous clip, this isn't reversible. So instead of starting at the bottom, we're actually going to have to start up here where this collarbone stitch marker is. So we're going to insert our hook into that loop and just to let you guys know i stopped one loop right before i got to my stitch marker so i'm going to be inserting my hook into the loop right underneath my stitch marker but if you guys stopped at your stitch marker that's completely fine but once we get here we're going to do the same thing we're going to insert our hook pull through start off by doing a chain up before do a row of double crochets working your way back and then do your cable stitches with single crochets in between going all the way down until we hit this juncture again because we're going to be doing a different kind of movement over here with this single crochet row and then I'll show you guys what to do once we get there and then everything else will be exactly the same. So I'll meet you guys back in just a few rows. Alrighty, so we have made our way down with our cable stitches going down the opposite direction and then once when we are about here where our juncture is, we're going to do another fancy-ish single crochet row. So all we're going to do to start that off is slip stitch into that next available loop and just like the previous side if you guys are just a loop or two off completely fine but go ahead and slip stitch up to work our way up to that single crochet row just like that we're going to flip our work and then once when we get here what we're going to do is we're going to start off by doing an increase on the side and then doing a decrease on the outside because we're going in the opposite direction of our first cable so into this first loop, we're going to go in with one, two single crochets, remembering that we need to have four for every single crochet row. So there are our first two. We're just going to be putting one single crochet into that next available loop. And then into these next two, we're going to be doing a decrease of two single crochets. So insert, pull through. Next loop, insert, pull through, yarn over, pull through all three. And then that is our work around this little divot that we have right here into our juncture but once we have that we're just going to keep going all the way down with our cable stitches once we make our way all the way down to the bottom we're going to do a chain up of one and cut alrighty so we are back and we have finished going in with our cable stitches and as you guys can see I've actually also finished up going in with one of our body portions but right before we go in with our body portion this is going to have a couple moving parts we're going to need to go in with our little underarm detail which is this guy right here so getting started on this cable underarm portion we're going to grab our same category 3 yarn our primary color grab our four and a half millimeter hook that we've been using and we're first going to start off by making a chain that goes from the front of our underarm to the back of our underarm and for me that's a total of three and a half inches or nine centimeters so i'm going to start off by making a chain of 15. Once when we have our chain the first row that we're going to do is just going to be a row of double crochet so we're going to block off that last chain do a chain up of three that counts as a double. We're gonna prepare for a double and then insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off or the fourth loop from our hook with a double crochet. And from here, just put one double crochet into every loop that we have going all the way down our chain. Now that we have a row of double crochet, the first thing that we're gonna to need to do is insert our stitch markers. And this is going to be the same for everyone. We're just gonna mark off where we want our cables to start. So from each end, we're gonna count in six loops, insert that stitch marker, and then from the other end, count in six loops, insert the next stitch marker. And from here, we can get started, but make sure you guys have your secondary color ready because this is what it is ultimately going to look like. This is a swatch that I did earlier. It's a little bit too big, that's why we're not using it, but this is a general idea of what it's going to actually look like. So how we're gonna start this off is start off by doing a chain up of three, that counts as a double crochet. We're going to flip our work and then into this first double crochet post that we have, we're going to start off doing a front post treble, but we will not finish it off because we're going to be inserting our next color. So we're going to skip this turning chain that we had in the previous row. And then we're going to go into this next double crochet post. So we're going to yarn over twice and we're going to insert our hook behind this double crochet post right here. Once we have that, we're going to yarn over pull through that post. We should have four loops on our hook. We're going to yarn over, pull through two, and then we're going to yarn over, pull through two. And then instead of doing a yarn over and then pulling through those last two, we're actually just going to grab our secondary color and place it onto our hook. And we're going to take our secondary color and pull it through our two primary color loops. Once we have that, we can go ahead and tie the tail end 
to our primary color, but don't cut the primary color because we want to keep that attached because we do not want to keep cutting and tying this piece. Once when our secondary color is nice and snug, what we're going to do from here is start going in with our cables. So how that works is we're going to start off with doing a yarn over of two because we're doing more front post troubles. We're going to be skipping this next double crochet post and then going into the one right after it. So we're going to insert our hook behind that second double crochet post that we have. And we're going to do a front post treble. So yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two, and pull through two. And we're going to be putting one more front post treble crochet into the post right after that. So into the one directly behind it, just like that. And then now we're going to go in with our twist that we have right here. But when we go in with this last twist, we will not finish it off just like how we didn't finish off this first front post treble because we're going to be switching out for our primary color. So we're going to do a yarn over of two and we are going to bring our hook all the way back to this post that we skipped. So bring it on back over here, insert, yarn over, pull through. We're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. We should have two loops left on our hook. We're going to take our primary color, making sure that our working yarn for our color that we're not using is hanging out behind our work. It could be in the front, but it just makes it a lot cleaner if it's hanging out in the back. But we're going to grab our primary color. We're going to yarn over and then pull through those two secondary color loops that we have on our hook. And now we're working with our primary color. And to close off this cable, we're just going to do one more regular front post treble. And by regular, I mean straight up and down, no twists and no skips. So we're going to yarn over twice. Insert that into that next post that we have, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, and pull through two. Once we have that, we can just go ahead and take out this stitch marker. And now we're just going to go in with double crochets going all the way across until we hit our next stitch marker. But the first thing we're going to want to do is count the amount of loops that we have in the previous row just to make sure that we're not doing any increases or decreases. So from this post to this post, we have a total of five loops. So we're going to count five loops in the back. Five, and then we're going to be inserting our hook into that six with a regular double crochet for this row. So prepare for a double crochet, insert it into that loop. But when we're doing this, we need our secondary color to travel with us to the other side. So we're just going to place our secondary color on top of the loop that we just inserted our hook into. And we're just going to leave that there. And then we're going to double crochet like normal. So we're going to yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. And as you guys can see, our secondary color is nice and woven into our primary color double crochet right here. Let's do this one more time. Prepare for a double crochet. Insert your hook into that next available loop, making sure that our secondary color is right on top of that. We're going to yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, regular double crochet. And we're just going to keep doing this all the way down until we hit our next stitch marker and then we'll meet each other back so that we can do another cable. So we are back and I have just taken out my stitch marker, but we're about to do our cables again into this next post and it's going to be exactly the same way that we did the first one. So let's get that started right now. We're still working with our primary color. We're going to do a yarn over of two. We're going to insert our hook into that next post that we have yarn over, pull through, but we will be switching it out at the end so that we can do our twist. So we're going to yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. Once we have just two loops left, we're going to drop our primary color behind our work, grab our secondary color. We're going to yarn over, pull through those two primary colors that we have on our hook. And from here, we're going to do the same cabling that we did in the other section. So let's just do that together really quickly. We're going to yarn over twice. Skip that next post and then insert your hook behind that next post that we have with a front post treble, just like before. There's our first front post treble. We need to do one more into the post right after that. So yarn over twice, insert your hook into that next post, pull through, pull through, pull through. And then we're going to work back into the post that we just previously skipped. So yarn over twice, insert into that post that we skipped, yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two. Once we get here, we do need to do another straight up and down front post treble. So we're going to switch out our work again. So make sure that your working yarn that you're not using is behind our work. Grab your primary color at this point, place that onto our hook, pull through the two secondary color loops that we have. And now we're working with our primary color. And from here, we're just going to do one front post treble that is straight up and down. So do a yarn over of two, 
insert into that next post that we have and now our cable section is nice and done on both sides just like that and then just to finish off this row we're going to do a regular double crochet into that last loop that we have right here pull through 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 and then once when we have this we're going to do a chain up of one flip our work and then we need to make our way over to this other side so that we can start doing our cabling again but the way that we're going to do that is first go in with six single crochets and the six single crochets goes over our cabling. So it's going to go over this section and this section as well. But for this middle section that we have for however many loops that you guys have, you guys are going to be going in with back loop slip stitches. So let's do that together. We're going to flip our work and we also need our secondary color to travel with us to this other side. So we're going to be hiding it in with us with our single crochets as well. So let's just get that started. We are going to first insert our hook with a single crochet into this first loop we should end up with six single crochets right before we start doing our back loops so what i like to do since my secondary color is about right here into my third loop i like to pick it up and then just go in with a single crochet this is basically the same technique that we did for the double crochets in the middle so as you guys can see our secondary color that needs to travel with us is right in the middle of our single crochet and it won't be moving around anywhere but we have a total of one two three we need to do three more single crochets so here is three four five and then six right here and now oh let's not split the yarn let's try that again six there we go and once when we are here we should be at this middle point so once when we get here we're going to do back loop slip stitches and i only have three loops to go into so i will be doing that myself but our secondary color cannot travel in between our slip stitches so it's just going to hang out behind our work and then once we start doing our single crochets on this other side we're going to tuck it in again so we're just going to want to make sure that our secondary color is still hanging out behind our work just like how this is right here then we're going to go in to that back loop with a slip stitch so insert into that back loop yarn over pull through everything into that back loop pull through everything and keep doing this all the way down until you guys hit your cable again and I just so happen to be there so what I'm gonna do from here is just go in with single crochets from here going all the way down but I do need to interweave my secondary color so I'm just going to insert my hook into that next single crochet loop making sure that my secondary color is hanging out on top of that loop and then single crochet we're just going to keep doing this all the way down until we don't have any more loops left to go into and then i'll meet you guys back so we can do one more row of our cabling and then i'll let you guys go from there so we're now at the end of our single crochet to slip stitch row and what we're going to do from here is flip our work so that we can do more cabling and as you guys can see our secondary color did follow us over to this side as well so we're all in good shape so how we're going to start off this next row is by doing a chain up of three so here's one two three we're going to flip our work and then basically everything that we did in the previous row we're just going to do the same thing so i'm just going to show you guys one more time so into this first front post treble that we have we're going to do a yarn over of two and we're going to insert it behind that first front post treble that we had in the previous row and then we're going to start it off but not finish it off completely because we need to switch out our colors to our secondary color so once we have just two loops left we're going to drop our primary color grab our secondary color we're going to yarn over and pull through those two loops and now we can do our cabling which is the same thing that we did in the previous row so do a yarn over of two we're going to need to separate our cable just a little bit and then we're going to insert our hook behind this middle post that we have right here so insert just like that pull through yarn over pull through two pull through two pull through two once we have that we need to go into that next one as well so yarn over twice into that next post pull through pull through two two and two and then from here we need to go in with our twist so yarn over twice and then we're going to insert our hook behind this first post that we skipped but we are not going to finish it off because we need to switch out for our primary color so we're going to bring it on back over here insert yarn over pull through pull through two pull through two and before we do a yarn over and pull through two of those last two we're going to drop our secondary color pick up our primary and pull through two once when we have that we're going to do a yarn over of two and then do this last front post treble crochet that we have for this cable section 
right into the previous front post treble, just like that. And then once when we have this, we are at this middle section, and now we're just gonna go in with back loop double crochets while hiding in our secondary color as well. So we're first gonna take a look at the back and count out five loops. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to yarn over, then insert our hook into that sixth loop. And then once when you guys are inserting your hook into that sixth loop, it could pick up this little strand that we have back here where we were bringing our secondary color over. That is totally fine, I actually prefer that. But once we have that, we're gonna make sure that our secondary color is laying on top as well. Yarn over, pull through, pull through two, pull through two, regular double crochet. We're gonna keep doing back loop double crochets until we hit our next cable. And I am right here, so we're gonna do the next cable together again. So starting off this next cable, it's gonna be exactly the same way that we did the first one, but let's just do this together one more time anyways. So we're gonna do a yarn over of two. Insert your hook behind that first front post treble with another front post treble, but don't close it off completely because we're going to switch out our colors once we have just these two loops on our hook. So we're going to drop our primary, pick up our secondary, yarn over, pull through two. And now we're about to do our twists. So we're going to do a yarn over of two. Insert your hook behind this middle post that we have right here. Yarn over, pull through. Pull through two, two, two. And then we're gonna go into that next one as well. So yarn over twice, behind, pull through two, 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 two. Now we have to do our twist. So yarn over twice, insert your hook into this first front post that we skipped, but we're not gonna close it off. So pull through, pull through two, pull through two, drop our secondary color yarn, pick up our primary, yarn over, pull through two. Once we have that, we're just gonna close this off with a front post treble and then a double. So here's one front post treble. And then just to close off this row to make it nice and even, do a double. And that is the first few rows of our cabling. And we're just gonna keep doing this until we end up having the height that we want. And I'm gonna keep going until I have a total of 29 rows and that is a total of seven inches or 18 centimeters. So I'll meet you guys back once when I have all of that done and then I will go in with a row of single crochet along the edges with you guys and then we'll do this just one more time. Okie dokie, so we are all back with our underarm cable stitch section and it's looking pretty great. And as you guys can see, I did actually end up on my cable stitch and double crochet row so I just ended it off with a row of single crochet on top just to clean things up but if you guys ended on your single crochet to back loop slip stitch that's totally fine just do whatever you guys think is more pretty but this is how I ended mine off but since we're here I actually didn't cut my primary color yet we're just going to go all the way down with a row of single crochet cut and tie and then go all the way down this side with a row of single crochet as well and once we have our single crochets we're going to count them out so that we know just about how many loops we need to have once when we go in with our body section. So that'll make more sense in a couple clips. But what we're gonna do from here is do a chain up of one, flip my work, and then into this section that we have right here, we're gonna be working into a bunch of side double crochets and side single crochets. So into here, we're just gonna be putting two single crochets into each side double and then one single crochet into each side single. So let's do that together. We can actually cut our secondary color. I do not need this anymore. And then what we're gonna do from here, I'll tie that in later, is into this first set of side double crochets, we're gonna go in with one single, two single into that same loop, into this side single right here. Here's one single. Side double, here is one-ish and two. And then side single, here's one. And then go ahead and keep doing this all the way down once you guys get to the end cut and tie and then actually do the same thing along the other side and then once when we have that done go ahead and do another one of these including these single crochets that goes along the other side and then we can get started on the body portion okay so i'm sure y'all can tell i already have one side of this already all finished up and we're going to start working on the other side next the first thing we're going to want to do for both sides is actually just start with a row of single crochet going along our little turning chain that we have right underneath our pillar for this collar section going all the way down just putting two single crochet into each of those so we're going to start at the top and then we're going to insert our hook into this corner loop 
insert our yarn onto our hook pull through and then into each side double crochet we're going to be going in with two single crochets so here is one single crochet and then here's two and then in between each of our side double crochets we do have a single crochet so into that single crochet just put one single crochet and go ahead and keep working your way all the way down just like that so two singles into each side double one single into each side single and then i'll meet you guys back once we make our way down to the bottom so we have just gone in with our first row of single crochet and as you guys can see i do have a stitch marker into this little divot that we have right here and just to let you guys know my stitch marker is actually into the 30 30 35th loop counting from the bottom but yours can be adjusted to higher or lower just wherever you see fit that is right where this divot is because we're going to have some decreases along this side so since we're at the bottom once when we work our way up to the top we're going to talk about just a little shoulder chunk but this is going to be completely up to you guys because this cabling that we have also counts as our shoulder chunk so i actually don't want mine to be any bigger than this i'm just going to do one row that reaches all the way up and then we're going to start doing decreases right here for our armhole so what we're first going to do is do back loop slip stitches going all the way up until we hit our stitch marker once we hit our stitch marker we're going to be doing a decrease of two so that we can count for this little divot that we have and do back loop slip stitches going all the way up and then i'll meet you guys back once we get right here just so we can do the decrease together and then we'll work our way up so once we get here we're just going to do a chain up of one flip our work oh wait it was already flipped flip our work and then we're going to go into this first back loop with a slip stitch so insert yarn over pull through everything next loop yarn over pull through everything and keep doing this until we hit our stitch marker in a divot so we are now at our stitch marker so what we're going to do is insert our hook into that loop we're going to take our stitch marker out for now we're going to put it back in in a second yarn over pull through into that next back loop yarn over we should have three loops and from here we're just going to pull through everything on our hook then we're going to insert a stitch marker back into that guy because we're going to maintain doing decreases right where this is but once we have that just do back loop slip stitches once into every back loop all the way up until we don't have any more loops left and then i'll meet you guys back so we can talk about this just a little bit okay so as you guys can see i have made my way all the way up to this last loop that we have and i'm actually going to stop having a little shoulder chunk because we're going to start doing a decrease but if you guys want your shoulder chunk to be a little bit longer just keep going back and forth until this is long enough for you guys but make sure that when you guys are working your way down our work going down towards the bottom of the top you guys don't do any decreases so really quickly the consensus of this top is once we're working our way up we are going to do a decrease here working our way down no decrease in the middle so once when we have this portion once we have our shoulder chunk all done I'm going to work all the way down with more back loop slip stitches no decrease here and then we're going to do a chain up of one once we get to the end work our way back up maintain that decrease and then I'll actually meet you guys back once we get all the way up here leaving the last three loops because we're going to do a decrease into the third and second to last and then just leave that last loop open so that it decreases a decent amount for us so go ahead and work your way down work your way back up remembering to maintain this decrease and then I'll meet you guys back up here okay so we are back and we have left the last three loops up at the top right after we have our shoulder chunk and like i said before we're going to be doing a decrease of two into the third and second to last so let's go into that first back loop or i guess the third to last back loop yarn over pull through second to last back loop yarn over pull through we're going to leave this one open because we want it to decrease a decent amount so from here all we're going to do is yarn over pull through all three and that's what we're going to do every time we're working our way up to our shoulder chunk and when we're working our way down we are going to do another decrease so we're going to do a chain up of one flip our work and into these first two back loops we're going to do a decrease so insert pull through next back loop yarn over pull through everything on our hook and then since we're working our way down we're just going to go all the way down putting one back loop slip stitch into every loop that we have and then let's lay this guy nice and flat so i can show you guys what we're going to do for the rest of this piece okay so we are now here so i'm just going to talk you guys through the rest because the pattern is going to be exactly the same it's just going to keep shrinking until it can't shrink anymore basically until we have da -da -da -da, the same size on the side that we have right here as we have for our little cable stitch section that we just made for ourselves in one of the previous clips so basically what we're going to do just for this pattern when we're working our way up we are going to always maintain this decrease that we have right here into this divot 
and then also leave the last three loops and then we're going to do a decrease of two back loop slip stitches into the third and second to last leaving the last loop just like how we just did up here and then when we're working our way back down towards the bottom of the top we're going to do a decrease of two into the first two loops and then do back loop slip stitches going all the way down we are not going to do a decrease at the divot working our way down and we're actually just going to keep going back and forth like this until this decrease reaches our underarm and you're also going to want to make sure that it has the same amount of loops on this side as we have for our little cable underarm portion that we just made for ourselves so if you guys need to decrease more feel free and when you guys are putting it up to yourself just make sure that you guys are stretching it out because it does stretch quite a bit as well and since i already know how many rows i'm going to do i'm just going to keep going until i have a total of 18 rows Alrighty, we are back and we have just finished up going in with this front body panel and i have attached my underarm portion over here so we're just going to attach the other one over here as well so this is going to be fairly simple all we're going to want to make sure is that our cabling is sandwiched in towards each other so we're just going to make sure that the cabling is faced up towards us we're going to flip this guy over and then we're going to be inserting our hook in through this corner making sure we're going in through the front panel and the back panel at the same time once we have that we're going to be inserting our yarn onto our hook pull through and do a chain up of one to secure and very simply we're just going to be inserting our hook into the first available loop into the front panel and then the next available loop into the back panel and then single crochet and we're just going to keep doing that all the way down until we don't have any more loops left to go into then go ahead and do the same thing that we just did here along the other side all right so we are back and we have just attached both of our underarm pieces and now we are ready to get started on the back so the first thing we're gonna have to do before we flip this over is actually just count this first row of single crochets that we did that goes from all the way down here all the way down to the bottom and then however many single crochet loops you guys have we're going to insert our hook into the back and make a chain count of the same number so into our collar that we have right here just simply into the next available loop that we have just insert our hook into there and then once when we have that we're going to start off by making a chain of the same number count as we have in the front and just to let you guys know i have a total of 76 single crochets so i'm going to make a total of 76 chains now that we have our chain we're going to block off that last chain do a chain up of one and then we're going to insert our hook into that loop that we blocked off or the second chain from our hook with a slip stitch and from here we're going to do one slip stitch into every chain that we have going all the way up and i'll meet you guys at the end so that we can connect it into the base together and now that we've made our way back with our row of slip stitches we are going to insert our hook into that next available loop to close off this row then once we have that we are going to slip stitch into that next available loop flip our work and then go in with back loop slip stitches so let's just do the first little bit together insert our hook into that first back loop yarn over pull through everything back loop insert yarn over pull through everything and we're just going to keep doing this going all the way down our chain that we just made work our way back up slip stitch it into the work the same way that we just did and then keep going back and forth just like that until we don't have any more loops left to go into into our collar and then i'll meet you guys back because we are going to have to do a little shoulder chunk and then this build down for our armhole as well so we're back and we have now gone into every loop that we have into the back portion of our collar and we are all done with this solid piece and now we're just going to have to do basically a little shoulder chunk to match this one that we have right here and then this decrease section that we have here so that we can attach it to our underarm portion so since i ended at the bottom what i'm going to do is work my way back up with back loop slip stitches but obviously we're not going to have anything left to go into so i'll meet you guys back once when we get into this last loop that we have or if you guys ended up here just do a chain up of one and then i'll meet you guys back in about two seconds so that we can do the rest together now that we have made our way all the way up we didn't have any more loops to go into into the base so what we're going to do from here is just do a chain out of one and then do back loop slip stitches going all the way back down and we're going to keep going for however many rows we need and basically we're just going to count how many loops we have for our cable stitch that we have right here so we should have four plus the rows that we came up here on the side for our shoulder chunk and i only came up for an extra row so i'm going to keep going back and forth until i have a total of five rows but you guys can make this as big or as small as you guys need to accommodate this length that you guys have right here but then once when you guys have that i'll meet you guys back so that we can start doing our decreases so we're back with our little shoulder chunk that we have right here and this looks significantly smaller than the shoulder chunk that we have here but keep in mind that it does stretch out quite a bit so once when we go to connect it it'll all work out 
But once when we get here, we are going to now do some decreases that matches the decreases that we have right here. So since I'm up on the top, we're going to do a little decrease of two and then work our way down. So how we're going to do that is do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then into the first two back loops, we're going to do a decrease of two back loop slip stitches. Pull through, pull through everything. And then once we have that, we're going to do back loop slip stitches going all the way down. Once we make it down to the end, do a chain up of one, flip our work, and then come all the way back up, leaving the last five loops because we're going to be doing a decrease into the fifth, fourth, third, and second back loop, and then leaving the last one. So go ahead and do that, and then I'll meet you guys back. So we're back with our back loop slip stitches coming all the way up, and we have left our last five loops, and we're going to be doing decreases of two into the next set of two. So let's do this together. We're going to insert into that first back loop, pull through, next back loop, yarn over, pull through everything. We're going to do one more of that. Insert, pull through, insert, pull through everything. And we left that last back loop because we left that last loop in the front and we need everything to be nice and even. Once we have that, we're going to do a chain up of one, flip our work. And then once we have that, do one decrease of two back loop slip stitches into the first two back loops and do back loop slip stitches going all the way down. Once we make our way back up, we're gonna do the same thing that we just did here. We're gonna leave our last five loops, do a decrease of two back loop slips into the fifth and fourth to last, do another one into the third and second to last, and leave that last loop. Chain up of one, flip your work, and do the same sequence all the way down, all over again, until this portion right here shrinks all the way down until we have the same amount of loops as our underarm portion that we made for ourselves previously and then I'll meet you guys back so that we can connect it all together. So we have just made our way all the way down with our decreases and we have a total of 23 rows just counting from our shoulder chunk down to where we have stopped and just so happens to be the same amount of loops that we have here as we have on this little underarm portion right here. And once we have this we can now attach it all. So what we're going to do is make sure that it is flipped so that all of our seams are facing the same direction. And then once when it is, we are going to be inserting our hook into this corner, and then also insert your hook into this other corner right here. I'm gonna yarn over, pull through everything, and it's gonna be the same deal that we've done for every other seam so far. We're gonna insert our hook into that first available loop into the front panel, and then into that next available loop into the back panel, and then single crochet, and then that is it. Go ahead and keep doing this all the way up and then once when we have this entire piece done I'll meet you guys back just to show you guys where to insert your hook for the other shoulder chunk and underarm piece and then I'll let you guys do the rest from there. We've now just finished up attaching our underarm portion to our back and what we're going to do from here is just show you guys where to insert your hook. So where I ended up right before I started doing my shoulder chunk was that I ended up down here at the bottom and then I worked my way up and then did everything back and forth that way. So since I ended on the bottom on this side, I'm going to start on the bottom on this other side so that it can match and then just do the same exact thing that we did on the other side and then seam it into the underarm portion. So we've just finished up going in with the side portion and now we're going to seam up the shoulders. And if you guys are wondering why everything is flipped wrong side out, it is because this shoulder portion needs to be done in that way so that all of our seams are facing the same side. So as you guys can see, I've already done this one. So let's do this next one together. And if yours is like mine, where the back portion looks super duper tiny, that's totally fine because it does stretch. So what we're first going to do is insert our hook in through the closest loop that we have into the front panel and then into the first loop that we have into the back panel, which just so happens to be this one right here. Insert our yarn onto our hook, pull through. We're going to start off by doing a single crochet. And then this is actually going to be the same way that we've seen to pretty much everything else. I just wanted to come and remind you that we did do the correct amount of rows from this inner corner to this outer end right here so that we had the same amount of rows as we have loops in the front. So just make sure that you guys are going in between each of the rows. So here's one row, here's the second, here's the third, and then so on and so forth. So just make sure that you guys are doing that and then just keep doing that all the way down. Once you guys get to the end, do a chain up of one and cut and then do the same thing to the other side. So I've just finished up seaming in our shoulder portions and now we're going to start working on our little shoulder cuff that we have right here. As you guys can see, I already have one done on this side. So we're just gonna do the next one together. 
So the first thing we're going to have to do is just go in with a row of single crochet that goes around our entire armhole that we have. So the first thing we're going to do is insert our hook into one of these middle loops that we have into this little cable underarm portion right here. And then from here, we're just going to single crochet going all the way across. But once when we make our way up to this point, we have a bunch of kind of loops for us to go into. So go ahead and just eyeball it as best as you can. But continue doing the single crochets going all the way around our work and then slip stitch into the first single crochet once when you guys make it to that. And then I'll meet you guys back so we can get started on the cuff. We have just made it all the way around and we have slip stitched into this first single crochet that we made. And from here we're just going to do little extenders that get wider the higher we get. So let's just take a look at this side really quickly. As you guys can kind of tell, we start off with some single crochets to half double crochets to double crochets. And once we get to the top of the shoulder, you guys can tell that it gets a little bit wider gradually. And we're just going to do the same thing on the other side. And this is going to be different for everyone. So we're just going to eyeball from here about to where we want our half double crochets to start to expand this work. So single crochet to about here half double to about here and then double crochet going all the way up and over and then whatever we did on this side we're going to repeat it along this side as well so i'm just going to do a couple back loop single crochets to show you guys how to start this off now that we have slip stitched into this first one we're going to do a chain up of one and then for me since i've already done the other side i will be doing just about 13 back loop single crochets once we came back with our first few back loop single crochets, I'm now going to go in with a couple back loop half double crochets and I'm going to be going in with six until I'm ready to start expanding even more and I'm going to go around with double crochets after that. So I'm just going to go ahead and start off by doing six back loop half double crochets. And now that we're done doing our back loop half double crochets, we're going to count and see how many loops we have on this side before we start doing our double crochets and we're going to be inserting our stitch marker on the other side so that we have a similar number count on the other side. So I have a total of 19 loops filled out. So I'm going to count from here going up 19 and I'm inserting my stitch marker into that loop. And then from where our hook is at all the way up and over our shoulder to where our stitch marker is, we're going to do back loop double crochets. And now that we've made it around to our stitch marker with our back loop double crochets, now we're just going to go down with back loop half doubles until we have the same amount of back loop half doubles on this side as we do on the other side and then finish it off with back loop single crochets. And this is actually going to be the pattern for as wide as you guys want your shoulder cuff to be. So once you guys get down to the end, do a slip stitch into that first single crochet, do a chain up of one, and then continue doing back loop singles to back loop half doubles to doubles, coming all the way around to back loop half doubles, back loop singles again. And I'm just gonna keep going until I have a total, counting this first single crochet row, until I have a total of four rows just like how I have on this side. And then I'll meet you guys back once we have both of our little shoulder cuffs finished up. So we have just finished up going in with our little shoulder cuff right here. And the next thing we're gonna do is just go around with a row of single crochet along the bottom just to clean up the edges. So we're gonna take whatever color we want our single crochet to be. Ours is going to be our primary color. And then from here, we're just gonna insert our hook into any one of these loops, does not matter which one. And we're just going to go all the way around with a row of single crochet. And for these portions where we don't have any rear loops for us to go into, we're just going to need to eyeball it a little bit. Just make sure that we don't put too many into one section. Otherwise, it'll stay stretched out and then it won't hug your body the way it's supposed to. So go ahead and just do that all the way around. Once we get to the first single crochet, we're going to slip stitch into that guy, do a chain up of one and cut. And now that we just finished doing our row of single crochet, we are now going to go in with the bottom border. So now we're going to take our secondary color and just do a row of single crochet with our secondary color along the top. So super samey. What we're going to do is insert our hook into any one of these loops. It doesn't matter which one. Pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Once we have that, just go all the way around putting one single crochet into every loop that we have. And then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do the next row. And we've made it all the way back around with our secondary color. We're just going to slip stitch into this first single crochet that we made for ourselves. We're going to yarn over, pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. And we're just going to go in with one more row of single crochet on top of this. So exactly the same with our primary color. And then we can actually go in with the border as well. So go ahead and cut this, grab your primary color, do a row of single crochet, and then I'll meet you guys back. 
And now that we are here, we have slip stitched into this first single crochet that we made for ourselves. And now we're going to go in with the height of the bottom border. So I want mine to be about two inches or five centimeters. So I'm gonna start off by making a chain of seven. Once when I have my seven, I'm going to do an additional chain up of three. So block off that last chain, chain up one, two, three, prepare for a double crochet. And then into that chain that we blocked off or the fourth chain from our hook, we're gonna go in with a double crochet. And from here, just go all the way down, putting one double crochet into every loop that we have, and then I'll meet each other back so that we can slip stitch into the base together. Now that we've gone down with our double crochets, what we're gonna do from here is slip stitch into that second available loop that we have into the base. So into this first one, no, we're gonna count up one, count up two, into that second one. Insert your hook, we're gonna yarn over, pull through everything, and now our first row of double crochets is finally nice and attached. And what we're gonna do from here is slip stitch up the next two available loops as well. So here is one, and then here's two. That works the way up to the next row. We're gonna flip our work. And then from here, we're gonna go in with back loop double crochet. So all that is is preparing for a double crochet. Insert our hook into that back loop with a double crochet so we get some ribbing. And then once we make our way all the way to the end, we're gonna do a chain up of three, flip our work, and continue to do more back loop double crochets. And we're gonna do that all the way down until we get to the base. And we are going to slip stitch it into the second available loop that we have into the base, just like how we just did to close off that row. And then in order to work our way up to the next row, we're going to slip stitch up the next two available loops, flip our work, and then do more back loop double crochets. And we're just going to keep going back and forth just like that until we don't have any more loops left to go into. We'll meet each other back so that we can seam it up together, and then we'll finish this off together. So we are back with our bottom band, and we have just made it all the way around. And what we're going to do from here is just seam it up. The only thing that we need to make sure we do is that it's flipped wrong side out so that our seam is facing the inside. So since it's faced right side out right now, instead of flipping the entire thing over, I'm just going to sandwich it in this way so that we don't need to flip everything around. So I'm just going to insert my hook back onto my work. And then once when I have that, I'm going to do a single crochet, making sure we're going in through the front and the back panel at the same time. So into the first available loop into the front panel, and then into the same available loop into that back panel. If my hook will go through, we're going to yarn over, pull through, pull through. And we're just gonna single crochet all the way down. Once we make it to the end, do not cut and tie because we're gonna go in with a single crochet row around with our primary color. And then one more right after that with our secondary color. And then we'll be done with this bottom row. But I'll meet you guys back once when we are done seaming up our bottom band. So now that we have just seamed up our bottom band, if we flip this inside out, you guys can see that the seam is right there. But once when we have that, we're just gonna go across with the row of single crochet with our primary color first. And this is gonna be fairly simple. We're just gonna go into each of these side double crochets ooh, with two single crochets, just like that. Into this next side double crochet, here's one and two single crochets. We're just gonna keep doing this all the way around until we hit this first single crochet that we made for ourselves. We're gonna slip stitch into there, do a chain up of one and cut, and then just go straight in with your secondary color, just putting one single crochet into every loop that we have, going all the way around, slip stitch into the first one, chain up one and cut, and then we'll get started on the hood, and then we will be all done. Okay, so we are back and we have finished the bottom border, and what we're going to do next is go in with our hood. And the first thing you guys are gonna wanna do is try this on and then figure out just about where you guys want your hood to start keeping in mind. We will have just a single crochet border along the outside, so we're going to need one available loop along the outside of our stitch markers as well. But just to let you guys know, from the bottom all the way up until where I have my stitch markers, I have a total of six and a half inches or 17 centimeters, or if we're counting from the bottom, I counted up 30 to this end, counted up 30 to this end, and then inserted my stitch marker. And then from here, we're going to start off by doing back loop double crochets, and we're going to be increasing into every six for this row and the row after. So let's get this started together. I'm just going to first take a look at my work, making sure that everything is faced right side out and then it's faced up towards me. I'm going to turn my work to the side and then we're going to work into the right side. I'm just gonna insert my hook into this loop that my stitch marker is in. Oh, let's take this out first, be a little bit easier. Insert my hook into that stitch marker, making sure that we're going in through the back loop. We are going to make a slip knot, insert that onto our hook, pull through, and I'm gonna start off by doing a chain up of three. So here's one, two and three. 
Once we have that three, I'm going to do another four on top of that. So once when this chain up of three is done, that counts as one. So I'm going to do four more and then it'll come out to five in total. So go ahead and do four more back loop double crochets to have five in total. Then I'll meet you guys back so that we can do our increase into the six. So we're back and we now have our five double crochets, including this chain up of three. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and into the six, we are going to do an increase of two double crochet, making sure we're going into that back loop. So here is one double crochet, and then here is two into that loop. Once we have that, we're just going to do this all over again, all the way down until we hit our next stitch marker. So what this is, is five double crochet, increase of two into the six, five double crochet, increase of two into the six. Then I'll meet you guys back once we make our way down to this point, and then I'll show you guys what to do from there. Okay, so we have just made our way all the way around with our first row of double crochets. It was back loop double crochets, by the way, where we're increasing into the sixth loop. And we are about to go into our second row, which is exactly the same, minus the back loops. So do five double crochets and do an increase of two into the six. Once when we have that, we're just going to maintain doing this, going all the way around until we hit the end. And then from there, we're actually not going to do anything else from there, unless if you want a really big hood, then go ahead and keep increasing. But I'm just going to keep going back and forth with just one double crochet into every loop that I have until we get the height that we want. So I'll meet you guys back once when we're at the end of the second row, just to remind you guys. And then I'll let you know how many rows and how many inches slash centimeters I'll have once when I'm done with the hood. Okay, so we are all back and we have two rows of our increases into every six loop. And then from here, like I said in the previous clip, I'm just going to work my way all the way up with double crochets, just putting one into every loop. And I'm just going to keep going up until I have a total of 22 rows, and that's actually going to come out to 12 inches or 30 centimeters. But you guys can make it as tall or short as you guys want. But once we have the hood size that we want, I'll meet you guys back so that we can seam it all up together. So we have just finished up going in with the entirety of our hood that we have right here. And now we are ready to seam it all up. So what we're going to do, we're just going to pinch these two corners together. And then once when we have that, we're actually going to reach inside the hood because we're going to need to flip this inside out. We're going to reach inside, grab this end right here, and then pull it on through. Once it's through, we're just going to adjust our grip for the corner. And then now we can seam up our hood. Once we're done, we can flip it inside out and our seam is going to be along the inside. So all I'm going to do, it's going to be the same way that we have seamed up pretty much everything else in this piece so far. So we're just going to do the first one together. We're going to insert our hook into this corner. Also insert our hook into the back panel's corner. Yarn over, pull through everything. Once we have that, into the next available loop into the front panel, insert our hook into the next available loop into the back panel, insert our hook, yarn over, pull through with a single crochet. And we're just going to keep doing this going all the way down until we don't have any more loops left. Once we reach the end, we're going to do a chain up of one and cut. And then we're just going to do a little border row, first starting off with our primary color and then going in with our secondary. So we have just finished up seaming up our hood and what we're going to do next is just clean up the edges with a row of single crochet with our primary color first. So the first thing we're going to do is just insert our hook into this corner that our hood is into. We're not going to go into that next available loop. So we're just going to insert it into that same loop into the body portion. We're going to pull through, do a chain up of one to secure. Once we have that, we're just going to be putting two single crochets into each of these side doubles. So let's just do that as an example really quickly. Into this first side double, we're just going to go in with one single crochet and then two. And that's it. We're just going to keep doing this all the way around until we make our way down to the end. We're going to slip stitch into this loop that is currently occupied with our first double crochet on this side. And then go ahead and chain up with one and cut. And then I'll meet you guys back to show you guys where to insert your next color. So we are very close to finishing. We have just gone in with our single crochet row with our primary color. And now we're just going to close this off with our secondary color. So all we're going to do is grab our secondary color make a slip knot with it and then from here we're going to insert our hook into the first available loop that we have so the first loop that doesn't have anything into it we're going to insert our hook insert our yarn onto our hook and from here we're going to pull through and then this part's going to be super duper simple just do a chain up of one and then go ahead and put one single crochet into every loop that we have 
having it go all the way around, slip stitch into that next available loop, do a chain up of one and cut. So we have just worked our way all the way around with our single crochet with our secondary color and we are actually all done with this piece. The last thing that we have to do is just weave in all of our ends. We have woven in our ends and this is our top all finished up. This turned out really great and if you guys think so too, stay tuned because we may have some matching bottoms coming up next week. So make sure you hit that bell so you don't miss out on any future uploads. There's a written pattern down below. Use offer code TCDDIY for a discount. Enter this week's pattern giveaway by telling us what your biggest pet peeve is. Good luck to everyone who enters. Also, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up because believe it or not, it actually really helps. And be sure to share us on Twitter, Pinterest, Instagram, and Facebook. Links down below. Link to our Etsy shop is down there too if you want to buy this piece or any other piece on the channel. Be sure to favorite this shop so you don't miss out on patterns and exclusive deals. Thanks so, 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 so much for watching guys and I'll see y'all in the next one.